Hey guys, welcome to Joe's RC Corner, and today we're going to be back on the Cricket. We've got a little bit of work that we're going to be getting done today. Uh, hopefully it's going to be mostly on the fuel system that we're going to try to get completed. Um, just kind of mocked up and finished. So that way it's ready to go. Uh, I do still have a lot of wiring to do. Uh, we're going to work on that uh, probably next week. Uh, but I also want to take a few minutes uh, later in the video and uh, have a little conversation. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, roll the intro and uh, we'll get uh, started here. Okay guys, so like I said, we're gonna be back on the cricket. We're gonna finish up the fuel system. So I wanna go ahead and uh, finish up the uh, passenger side uh, with the vent line and everything and get it drilled through and get that through the back wall here inside and uh, get it down into the hell hole so that we can get that fuel line completed, get the fuel filters mounted and uh, go from there. So we're gonna spend a lot of time down inside the airplane in the back. So uh, the other thing I wanna talk about guys is we have, we got my, uh, Called up Alyssa, and like I mentioned to you guys, um, went ahead and we are going to go with the four-point harness. So we have these here in in the uh, in the shop here, and uh, very nicely packed, um, and they give you all that nice, beautiful hardware. So let's go ahead and turn the camera around and let you guys see. Okay, guys. So like I said, uh, packed up really nice. Some of these bolts don't go to this, so I'll get those out. I just needed to get them out here. So. They give you some really nice, sturdy hardware that's gonna be going into the back of the plane here. So, um, as you know, up here, uh, we have the panel here now. So this has gotta go in between. So I gotta trim this piece back a little bit so we can get that mounted. Actually, not too much. That actually fits almost perfect, guys. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get this all lined up. We'll get it, get it in place. We're going to drill out the holes and get those A6 rivets in place and uh, get those mounted. And now I will have my uh, four-point harnesses. This one might need to be trimmed over here just a little bit. It doesn't quite fit in there, so we'll have to sand that back just a little bit more just to get that piece in there. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to get these in and then uh, see how that works out. Um, I also, for my plugs, I went ahead. We're going to be putting some Molex connectors in here. Uh, I believe this is a, uh, uh, let's see, this is a 10 pin, which should be more than enough if I remember correctly. Let's see how many wires I get on this side. We got one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five on this side. So we'll have some extras. So five pins over there. And what do we have on this side? And I believe this side is about the same. So we got one, two. One, two, three, four, five. Five on this side. So we'll have a 10 pin in there. Uh, that should be fine. Having a couple extra ports will give me uh, space to be able to add other things down the road if I need to. Uh, so that'll work out great. But today, I think we're going to work on getting those uh, seat belts in. Call those done for the day. And uh, then we'll go back onto the electronics again. Because as you guys know, we're working on the uh, avionics here and uh, <laughs> rat nest. Uh, we got to get all this cleaned up still. Uh, still got some more wiring to do, but at least we do have the EFIS uh, wired up over here now. Let me clean the lens here. There we go. Now we do have the EFIS uh, wires are all right here. So we have a couple more ports here that I need to fill in and that's for the, uh, the right tank and the left tank actually right and left tank sensors here and i believe the other one is the fuel flow sensor here so we'll get all those kind of wired up uh as we go we got to feed everything through uh this i may actually just go straight wired in hard lined to it um don't know yet we'll figure that out that's my sh basically it's my sensor for my power so we'll get that all straightened out and uh, worked into it as we need to. Um, but we do have some wiring to do, guys. So, uh, of course, my flap servos need to be wired. So we, I need to think about my harness here and get that all taken care of. So first things first, 
I think today we're going to do the easy task, get the seatbelts mounted in there, and uh, call that done. Okay? All right, so let's get moving. Okay, guys, so taking a quick break here, and uh, just wanted to show you what we've got accomplished up here. So let me go ahead and clean the lens again. Okay, so uh, we have the uh, channel in now. We have the two holes right here for the fuel lines to go through. So that's uh, one of them will be the uh, vent to the header tank to the main to the right tank, and the other one goes down and into uh, from the fill, which is the main feed line here, and it goes in here. We got the and I went ahead and I put some of this headliner stuff here uh, just to. Uh, Kind of give it a nice soft touch there. Uh, the rest of this is not going to have any of that. It's just going to be on these um, so we can get those uh, in. And we got a little bit more work to do on this one because my GPS cable also has to go through there. So we got a little bit more work there. Uh, and, and I did notch this, uh, this piece here. This has been notched and then I have a uh, plastic grommet around it to protect the fuel lines from rubbing against it. Um, so that way there's no problem. So that's been notched, plenty of air of space for those cable, for the fuel lines to go through. And uh, I thought that looked pretty good. Also, we got the uh, first mount in here for the uh, four point harness. So this is really nice and strong. We're gonna go ahead and get this riveted in place because I'm not gonna paint this. This is gonna stay, the, uh, the mount is gonna stay this color. I'm not painting that. So that's gonna get riveted in place now. Um, I know I have this piece here uh, that might get drilled out and uh, we'll put another one in here that's going to hold the fuel line a little bit just to take some of that support out. Do the same thing over here somehow. Um, maybe zip tie them together so they hold together. But this really makes, I'm going to turn it, the camera, and as you can see this really makes for a nice clean install for the fuel system here. Now, I only used A4s to hold this in place, and the reason for that, guys, is it's not a supporting beam. It's just housing the fuel lines. Um, for the four-point harness, which this is designed for from Zenith, uh, I'm actually using the four-point harness system from Viking here. So that's actually attached right to this beam here, and I don't need to add any extra support on the other side of that skin. So, uh, as you can see, so as you can see, we have the A4s all in here on the top one and man, that really stiffens this hop skin up a lot. So I'm really happy I decided to do that. We'll feed the fuel lines through, uh, which we already did. Uh, we'll get that side next. We're gonna end up pulling all of that apart, uh, fix the GPS cable going in, and then uh, we'll cover up that piece with that felt uh, headliner material on that top section there inside there. Uh, and then those two beams will be done. And then the fuel system is done. So happy with that. <clears throat> then the next things we'll do is we'll start making up the plugs here for the, uh, for the wings right here. We'll get those wires fed down and then up to the front so we can get everything wired up there. Okay, uh, now with the, uh, this, what I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, Unfortunately, I don't believe I'm going to have the cricket ready for Oshkosh this year. There's just way too much to do in a small amount of time here. July is coming up on us very fast, and I don't want to rush. I want to make sure I have a safe aircraft to fly, and uh, especially since I'm going to be taking my family on in the airplane once in a while. So I want to make sure that she's going to be safe to operate in the national airspace. And uh, I want to make sure I do it the correct way. So I'm not going to hurry up and try to get it done in time. It's just, it's not feasible to do. So um, with my work schedule and everything, especially. So <clears throat> I know I was uh, planning to go out there and uh, have the plane uh, out there with, uh, with Viking. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to drive up. Um, it's going to be a long drive, about 22 hours, a little over 22 hours, uh, from Las Cruces here. But, um, I think it's going to be the right thing to do. Uh, that way I can take my time, get her done properly. 
Uh, but I do want to get out there. I've never been to Oshkosh, and I'm really looking forward to being out there and uh, seeing everybody again. I haven't seen uh, a lot of you Viking guys, uh, Viking aircraft, uh, or Zenith aircraft and Viking guys out there uh, at any of the events uh, recently. So I really want to get out there and see everybody. So the uh, plan is right now is to keep working, keep plugging away at her, try to get her as close as possible, and uh, we'll go from there. So that's the plan, guys. I know a lot of you might have wanted to see the, the cricket out there at Oshkosh, but here's the deal. At the end of the day, I need to make sure my airplane is going to be safe for me. So that's what's going on. So with that, <clears throat> I decided to go ahead and install the autopilot systems. So I was looking at the eye level um, or the level, 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 level avionics uh, trim tab, similar to what uh, Bill has on, uh, on, on Joker. Um, but since I have the 175 in here and I want to be able to do um, IFR, GPS IFR in this airplane, I didn't feel that that was going to be the best option because it's not allowed uh, per levels site. It's not allowed for IFR. So I went ahead and I ordered the servos from Grand Rapids, uh, which is the EFIS that I have. The EFIS already has an autopilot built into it. So just adding the servos will help, will, will provide me with the roll and pitch, nav, uh, and so on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I've already got them on order. I've already talked to Eric and, uh, and John uh, over at uh, Grand Rapids and uh, have those on order. So next, after sun and fun, they're gonna give me a call, try to get those out to me. Um, and uh, so we're gonna get those installed. Now. I did still go with uh, level avionics for backup because I want to be able to fly this in IFR uh, with uh, limited IFR, of course, uh, because it's only a GPS equipped, not VOR equipped. Um, I still wanted to have a backup means of navigation. Uh, so I ordered the bomb. Um, hopefully that comes soon. I've also signed up with Level for their affiliate program, and I'm going to leave a link down in the description. Uh, if you guys are interested, check out the link, and uh, either, you know, a great backup system could be the bomb. Uh, I haven't personally used it yet, but I'm interested, and we're going to install it on the Cricut as a backup system. So uh, that's the plan, guys. We're going to get going with that. So as soon as that arrives, we'll take a look at it, do an unboxing, and uh, see where we're going to mount it. Uh, and go from there. So that's the plan. Uh, so unfortunately, the cricket won't be out at Oshkosh, but I plan to be out there and uh, enjoying the festivities and uh, enjoying the show and hanging out with, um, with Jan and Alyssa and Sebastian and Roger, everybody in the Viking and Zenith community. Uh, and uh, of course, I'll have some fun stuff out there. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm planning on bringing out, I have a bunch of uh, Cricut logos uh, patches. If you guys are interested, they're gonna be on first come, first serve. Uh, I only have roughly about uh, 200 of them. So make sure you come by and, uh, and seek me out and I'll have some for you guys. So uh, other than that guys, that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It might be a bit short this week, but uh, next week we'll get back on her. I'll have two days next week to work on her. This week, unfortunately, we only had one. Uh, but we'll get that wiring done. We've got to finish up the wiring on the inside uh, under the, the, the panel, so that way I can get that closed up. Because uh, I'm really getting, I really want to start finishing that front nose section off, getting that completed, getting the windscreen in there permanently, finishing up the wings, get those off, get them prepped for paint. The tail, of course, needs to get ready for paint. Um, we're, we're getting there, guys, but it's not going to get done in time, and I really wish that it was, but it's not. So I'll catch you guys on the next video because I need to get back to work. See ya.